What is up, everybody? They say not to bury the lead, so I'm not going to do it. We got a new tripod. We got a new tripod, everybody. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see a, a lot of tripods, but we have a new one right here that we're going to talk about and to help us talk about it. We got Mr. Paul Neese. Paul, I can't. There you are. There. Uh, and uh, and our good friend Ryan Muckenhern. So, uh, gentlemen, welcome, 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 Mark. And uh, exciting day. We're going to talk about this tripod. Now I am going to bury the lead because we're going to talk about kind of a greater topic that we're going to roll this into, and that's uh, how to choose a tripod. You got uh, you know different different form factors, different heights, Multiple different choices. different uh, I guess you know leg locking mechanisms, uh, weights, materials, uh, lots of good stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, what uh, I was going to say we're going to talk about this within the context of choosing a hunting tripod, but the new switchback carbon, kind of a hybrid. It is. And in it fact, is. it's not kind of, it is. Yeah. So yeah. that so that's fun. So a lot of versatility there. But uh, Ryan, what, what are you looking for in a tripod? What are, what are the kind of the main things you're looking for? What are things that you consider? A couple of things. Um, one, how I'm going to use the tripod and where I'm going to use the tripod. So the majority of my hunting where I'm going to be using a tripod is probably going to be South Dakota, Wyoming, and Nebraska. I'm probably not going to be using a tripod here in Wisconsin. There's very little opportunity for me to do that. Um, and so looking at those places that I'm going to be using it, what I'm going to be chasing when I have it with me, I want something that's robust. I want something that's lightweight because I'm going to be carrying it around. I don't have a huge precedence for a tall tripod because in those places, I'm typically not standing with it. And so I'm going to elect something a little bit more on the compact side. So think a little, little, right? <laughs> so now All I'm, right. I'm, we know I'm, where Ryan's headed. I'm, I'm overshadowed by Paul over here, not only in stature, but in selection as maybe well. I'll, maybe I'll move these. Just hold those up again, Ryan. Which and ones are you holding up there? So, yeah, I've got the, the Mountain Pass, which was new for us last year. This is a, a, a lightweight alloy tripod um, that we have. A couple things, I'm just going to say it. I like lever locks better than twist locks. I really do. Um, they're they're simple. They're they're super easy and and um, oh, they're just super easy, right? So if I'm sitting on a hillside and I want to deploy my tripod leg, I don't have to like twist it with one hand and then like fish it out. I can unlock it and generally let gravity do the work and then relock it at that point, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I like that. Um, I I just I really like lever lock legs. Um, I'm, I'm growing on twist locks a little bit because the switchback has given me some things that I haven't had in a tripod before, a packaging of weight, a packaging of capability, um, the twist lock mechanisms on there, very robust. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm lukewarm on carbon. I'll take it or I'll leave it depending on how that tripod is configured. Um, so like the summit carbon too, if you're looking for the most compact tripod that we make, and the lightest tripod that we make is Summit Carbon too, for sure. Yep. Um, I'm a panhead guy, generally. Um, I've used ball heads. I like a panhead better. The ball heads that I was using at the time uh, pale in comparison to the ball heads available to the consumer on today's market. Sure. True. So these, these were monstrous true. ball heads. They were huge, um, extremely heavy. They were paired to a very large form factor tripod, and it was a thing I thought I needed. It was kind of like when I got into spotting scopes for the first time. Right. Bought the biggest one that I could, and I got it in a straight. That was a mistake. Um, ball heads have changed. I've been stuck on pan heads now for the better part of a decade, and um, like I said, that's changing a lot of my mind, depending on where mm. I'm going to be. Yeah, it's a little hard, you know, when you when you go ball head to pan head. Well, it depends on the quality of each. Yep. You know, yep. there are there are. High end pan heads, low end pan heads, yep. and, and the same with ball heads. So yep. that kind of comes into play there too. You yep. know, you can get good or bad in both, and probably the same is almost true in twist locks versus lever locks mm -hmm. too. I, you know, I think overall I would tend to agree with you, Ryan. I, I think if it were down to similar quality between the two, I'd probably prefer a flip lock. Yep. Uh, but these can run pretty good. You know, with with practice, they're pretty fast to use. You, yeah. you kind of learn to grab them all in one hand and. You can do it all at one time. Yep. Some but of it is. I think flip getting, locks are a little quicker. I, I think they're a little bit quicker. I do think it is just getting used to like if if you're 
going between the two, you know, I think you just kind of get that need to get used to that new system. Yeah. Like you yeah. kind of learn the, the intricacies of it and just kind of how, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, this is fine too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. yeah, we're Ryan, you and I are kindred spirits at, when it comes to, I guess, you know, attributes that we would look for yeah. in a tripod, uh, the places that we would, uh, use them, you know, pretty similar landscapes. Um, if I can find a place to sit down, I'm going to glass sitting down. I I just have not glass standing up very much at all. And I think, Paul, you, you glass standing quite up a quite bit, a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah, and it didn't used to. You know, I, like Ryan, you know, I, I hunt all over the West. Um, I would agree it's a it's a little, probably a little more of a Western thing than it is a Midwest or an Eastern thing running yeah. tripods. Um, it's typically any place you're going to just look long distances for long periods of time. And it's just a lot easier to do with a tripod, whether it's a bino, which is, you know, it's optional to have a tripod or a spotter where you have to have a tripod. Um, but yeah, I'm all over the place on size. I mean, some, you know, if it's a, if it's a high mountain backpack type hunt, yeah, I'm going to go with something as trim and light and, you know, as small as I can and match it to a spotter. But then, you know, depending on the level of physical exertion in the hunt, I'm probably going to up the amount of weight I'm willing to put into a tripod and, you know, and, and pack more around. Um, yeah, I've always felt tripods are kind of the redheaded stepchild of <laughs> optical products. Yeah. You know, it's almost like the the last product guys will look at. But then what happens is if you get into a situation and your tripod fails or you forget it maybe, all of a sudden you realize what a valuable piece of gear that thing mm-hmm. really is. Um, so I think I should put a little bit of time and thought into buying a tripod and picking the right one. Um, I end up with multiple tripods, surprise, mm-hmm. surprise, you know, little ones, tall ones. Um, I have been hunting definitely more down in the desert Southwest and, and a lot of guys do like to glass standing on foot there. I'm not dead sure why it is, but it's definitely something I see I mean, more. that's when I see those guys just set It is that stuff part of the country. But the- having having done it now, I actually really like it. I mean, I think sometimes it's it's due to your, your lot of cactus, you yep. know, rough, rocky stuff, not always easy yeah. to find a place to sit. Um, sometimes it's just due to seeing over vegetation and terrain around you. It's just mm-hmm. a little bit easier with a taller tripod. Um I find it actually a little more comfortable than you might think it would be. I think it's because you can kind of walk yourself around. Yeah, you take a alter, break. You know, wait one foot, wait yeah. the other foot. Um, I will get into this new one, but I really like this thing. I'll actually find myself leaning on a tripod, putting body weight on it sometimes, okay. yeah. which, which again, having a little more size definitely helps. But give it a, give it a try. You might find it grows on Well, you maybe I will. Let me ask you this. I mean, are you glassing, like, is it, I guess, you know, flatter country to where like you're kind of like oh i'm glassing from this perspective and you're probably maybe you're glassing far enough away that you're like oh i'm gonna go 50 yards to the right and you just pick up your tripod yes, and move. Over the- that does come into play so it's, I it's, guess it's, from a, like it's a- an ease of movement sometimes it's also an ease uh if you're sitting in a spot and you have a you know maybe 270 degrees of useful country around you you can look at yeah as opposed to maybe sitting on your butt or sitting in a chair it's super easy if you're standing just to pick it up yeah. and change your perspective instantly. Well, so I think that's, that is uh, yeah, part I'm of it. Get, because, yeah. you know, when you sit, like, I'd say generally, what, like, I'm getting set up to glass, and this is where I'm glassing from, and, and, and I'll move around, yeah. but not like, okay, you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and, and I've done that too. It, I think it, it just really depends on the place you're looking and, the you know, the viewpoint you have. Um, but standing is not as bad as it sounds, I would say. Mark and I were talking about a hunt um, earlier today uh, that I had done in New Mexico, and there was no terrain feature. Like, so I'm glassing through nothing but cactus, ocotillo, and mesquite, right? And so if I would have sat with it, I would have disadvantaged myself completely. Oh. So standing would have been advantageous where when we were low. When we were high, of course, then we're glassing down. Like, there, there was just zero yeah, opportunity yeah. To be successful while seated, um, and, and so we didn't spotting scope class there. It was just all binos at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, train train's a huge, mm-hmm. huge part of it. And then when I'm in, say, Wyoming, for instance, I'm usually on an elevated position, looking down or looking across uh, a canyon or a draw or something like that, and yeah. and tearing into it. I, I really don't tripod glass much when I'm 
like on the open plains because yeah. there's not a great opportunity to do so. You know, I was just thinking one of the other things I find if I'm if I'm going to set up like Mark, you were saying, you kind of pick a spot and you can get comfortable and look at it. Maybe you have a chair or just something really comfortable, a pad. I still like longer tripods. I think, you know, maybe I've got long legs, long torso. I find it easier to, to kind of fit myself in with longer sure. legs. But then what will happen is if I'm going to sit, I'll usually have those legs spread out wide, you know, really stable, kind of bringing the head back towards you a little bit. Okay. But then what happens, yeah, you get comfortable. It's great. But then it becomes to move and adjust. Yeah. It becomes awkward. You know, you kind of have to pick this thing up, reset the legs. And that may be where, like, standing has an edge because it's yeah. maybe not quite as comfortable, but your ability to pivot and move faster is a lot easier. I mean, yeah, I've talked to, you know, some, you know, guys, you know, Arizona, Southwest, whatever. And, you know, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I don't ever stand. They're like, yeah, I always stand. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's it's definitely more common down there. Yeah, big on know. tall tripods and big on big binoculars. Yes. Down there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, okay, so we've covered twist locks, lever locks. Ryan, you hit on, I guess, you know, leg construction. You know, we've got uh, aluminum versus carbon. One note on that, and something I, I didn't say. Carbon is a really interesting um, material. A lot of people immediately think it's guaranteed to be lighter, and it can be, but that depends. One thing that is undeniable about a carbon leg tripod is it's like resonance dampening. So if you've ever glassed in the wind... Or if you've ever bumped your tripod while you're glassing through it, a carbon tripod is very dead. Mm -hmm. It's just like you get a little wiggle and it stops. And an alloy tripod will sit and seemingly like reverberate for a much longer period of time. They seem to be more affected by wind too. And maybe that's just my head saying that. But they are definitely a deader material. They're also not cold to the touch. <laughs> I was going to say the same. <laughs> if you if you don't wrap them <laughs> on a cold day, it's yeah. a lot easier to grab this and than it is that metal leg. Yep. Ding 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 yeah. ding yeah. with metal parts and much less. Yeah. With this little vi- little vibration dampening, a yep. little more you know dead you know on yep. contact. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's certainly a premium feature in a tripod. It comes at a price, of yeah. course. That's mm-hmm. the drawback to yeah. it. You're going to pay more for carbon legs, but uh, it may, generally makes a pretty good material for oh, a yeah. tripod leg. Yeah. What, uh, Paul? Tell us about the new the new switchback. You've been running this thing. Well, here f- let's let's actually contrast. So this this one's been out for a little while. This is the Ridge View, so okay. you, you can kind of sort of see generally somewhat similar dimensions. Longer legs, tall, yeah. great, great for someone who like myself, tall. I like to stand up behind. You know, I've used this one a lot. One of the things that you see this is obviously larger legs, a little more weight. Uh, features are a little bit different, but kind of works the same way. Twist locks. This one really, I think, has come into its own partly due to the fact of the popularity of shooting rifles off of tripods mm-hmm. now. And I find, I've done it off of this one, I find it to be a little a little light and flexy for me. And the head is, a, I think, a little bit small. It doesn't really control the rifle well. So that right there is, it, you know, that's a huge plus to this. It This does that. This really doesn't do it all that well. Larger head, uh, it's it's a really cool head. I actually like it a lot. Um, it's easy to use. It definitely works better off with the with the rifle set on it. And of course, you know, jumping to the optics, there's no loss running optics on this tripod other than you're packing around a little more weight to carry it. You put a big spotter on this or a big bino, it's it's more solid than this is. Sure. So there's really the only disadvantage, kind of similar dimensions and height you can see with legs. A little more weight in return for the weight, you gain stability, you gain strength, you gain the ability to shoot off of it. Um, I find this thing to be a great compromise. It's smaller than our than our big radian tripods, which were kind of really geared towards shooting off of. Right. This thing seems to hit a perfect balance for me, but I'm you know I'm willing to carry this thing around on anything probably but the most extreme backpack type hunts um, because I know I can shoot off of it. It's fantastic for glassing off of. Uh, I like the controls. I mean, it's got some neat features. It, it has this, this flip lever, which controls the ball, and, and you can set the tension on that lever. You can set it just as light as you want it with your thumb. Move. I mean, it, it becomes extremely easy to, to move and position and lock. Um, it's also, it is a ball-type head, but it has a couple neat features. There's a lock and a button on the side. You can pop this thing right off, which sometimes is nice for transport. It's also nice. Uh, it's easy to wipe out and clean if you're in dust or dirt. Super easy to take this thing out and clean it. Oh, yeah. Um, just kind of a unique head. I mean, it's it's fairly compact and small, but yet yeah. I find it to be 
a, a lot nicer than that had in use. It's um, it's a, definitely a robust tripod. <clears throat> yeah, no question. Uh, but yeah. still, still pretty darn streamlined at the same time. Like you said, it, yeah. it affords you a lot of versatility. We were talking about different types of terrain just a second ago, and uh, you know, in in different places, in some places, you can get prone on darn near. Any shot you mm-hmm. might want to take, right? Yeah. Just lay over your pack and and shoot. Uh, some places you can't. I mean, and this is going to give you if you if your rifle is set up to shoot off a tripod or or you you know you. Uh, uh, well, it, you can see there's no gonna, there's no center column on this thing, right? So it's right. it's a tall. And I'm I'm a tall guy. I'm six foot three. I can I can set up a bino and a spotter and glass straight off of this thing. So I have all the height I need. I don't need a center column. Um, and the fact without the center column, this thing will go flat. I mean, mm-hmm. it'll, it'll be just like shooting off an ultra-strong bipod if a guy wanted to go prone right. with a rifle. Bring your own shooting bench. Yeah. It, well, I yeah, mean, that's just it. I mean, you're, you're almost getting, like, prone-like stability from, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, you know, the I find that one plus to the longer legs, too, is if you are, if you're on, like, steeply angled terrain, and sometimes maybe you're sitting, you want to shoot off that terrain, having the ability to stretch a leg way out to the mm-hmm. side and down, you can get that thing down on a slope in front of you and still shoot off of it really easily. So that's, sometimes on the little short leg stuff, that gets a little tough to do. They just don't quite have enough length on the legs to do it. Mm-hmm. Um like I said, you know, you look at this thing is just as easy to carry as this thing. You know, little, slightly more heft to it, mm-hmm. similar height, length, another pound in weight, but again, gaining that ability to shoot off of is a huge plus. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's coming in at uh, four point six. So yeah, and these are what just over three pounds, I think. <laughs> on the yeah, something like that. For contrast, this one's coming in right at four, four, four one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like from from a weight comparison, it's it's on par with with this, but this is. I think a much more, um, I don't know, advanced system mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from from head control, the ability to shoot off it, the inherent stability of carbon. Um, it's taller, which is something that's pretty notable. Mm-hmm. I'm also tall, so if I do stand in glass, <laughs> yeah. that helps. Yeah. Yep. Have you um, like vinyl glassed off it? Yeah. Oh, tons, tons and tons. Yeah, and both vinyls and big spotters for sure. Yeah, it works extremely well. Um, this, you know, the, like I said, I really, I like the, that flip lever on there. I mean, I really, because you can adjust the tension with this screw on the end here. Mm-hmm. So you can set this super light. And so literally, I mean, you can, you can glass pan and just with just the slightest touch of your thumb, you can lock it. So it, I mean, okay. it works very well. It's a slightly noisy head. You can probably hear that sound as I do that. Okay. Um, that's just part of the way that when you're, when you're panning with it, you're not using the ball. You're panning okay, with this right. mechanism. You know, I've had guys in the field tell me, oh, you're going to scare game. Well, no, you're not going to scare game because nothing can hear you that's not within 10 feet of you. Right. Um, but, I mean, it's just part of the, you hear that that panning sound. And that, again, the guy can wipe. You get dust, you wipe it out. I, I really like the way the thing works. Well, yeah, you got to think, too, like when you're tripod glass and you're not, you're not doing that. You're doing no. You're going just tiny incremental movements. Yeah, and so the nice thing, you know, you can you can use the 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 ball. You can set an angle, and then you can just you can just Maintain. pan yeah. back mm-hmm. and forth with that. So yeah, I do like that. That was a uh, I never even thought about that until Paul just showed me that. I've goofed around with that tripod not a ton, but it's like okay, I can. I can get used to this ball. I never even thought about panning yeah. in that fashion. Yeah. 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 So the yeah, and this this is running the ball. This this lever here yep. is the one that's running, you know, on there yep. it's it's locked. But yeah, it it's you can set the angle and yep. just it's effortless. It really is I mean it works very, very well. Yep. I like it. I can tell you, um if I was uh like an outfitter or something where people were using my gun, you know, to execute longer shots, I would probably have it set up with this tripod because like you said for a tripod that is uh like well let's not like well you can use it to shoot off of it's like no you can shoot off this tripod right that's where you know that's how you know in a pinch yeah you can shoot off of this one you could probably shoot yeah, off of the right. you know the high country there but once once you've used this you really kind of realize what you're giving up you know just the stability and the strength of it is in a different different league there's a lot of companies out there now that are making arca swiss compatible plates that attach to your rifle even if you have like a really conventional rifle like a remington 700 right 
you can get an Put arc plate. Short, short piece. Of, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and yeah. they're tying into maybe your front action screw or your bottom metal or even your sling swivel stutter with a simple gunsmith inlet, not like an over the top massive stock modification. You can attach a super short piece of arc Swiss rail to the bottom of that gun and triple the functionality of it. I did the same thing for uh you know, for my AR too. Yeah. Just a short piece of yep. arca that goes into the fore end there. So theoretically you can exempt your bipod. I could I could leave my shooting sticks behind. It'd be hard for me to do probably, but um, you could end up saving total kit weight by using this as one your shooting rest, two your observation deck, um, no sweat, and shooting off a tripod. I, I I went from zero to sixty on that the first time we were doing an on range with the Radians. It's really the first time I I did it and did it right perhaps. Uh, Thousand fifty yards on a tripod standing. Pull the trigger and watch the impact. And yeah. he was like, well, that was nice. When you prone them out, too, it's like it's like bringing your own bench to the field. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. super I mean, cool. Mm-hmm. When you think about what it, it really can transform yeah. for the hunter, like I think about like my max effective range, like shooting offhand because mm-hmm. the scenario demands me to shoot offhand. Mm-hmm. You know, like we're talking maybe a couple hundred yards. Yep. Not a thousand fifty. Right. Well, okay. I'm not going to shoot at anything at that. Right. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It was. It was to me. It was no different than having the bench there. I walked up to my rifle. I dialed my data coordinate. I got on the gun. And I'm like, huh. Boom. <laughs> right. And and then it was like, and one one thousand impact. And it's like, oh wow. Yeah. That was clever. And to be able to, like you mentioned, the offhand shot. Like, there's something a lot of people don't practice. Mm. But if you're in terrain where you can't, if you're in tall sage, if you're in mesquite, if you're in brush of any kind, oh, you yeah. can't High prone. Grass, yeah. You yeah. walk around with your tripod extended or short, maybe just slightly shorter than, set your tripod down, and now you're in a standing, technically offhand position, shoot up over the top of that brush, and your tripod's mm-hmm. right there. You yeah. know, something yeah. that's that's funny that I, that I think about um, is, I, I'm not going to say like shooting off a tripod is like new in the U.S. I mean, people have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. But you you watch like any like Africa hunting, yeah. you know. I mean, PHs, well, Paul, you've been yeah. to Africa. Oh, much yeah, times, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. PHs I mean, are you're, at you're, the you're, ready with, I guess they're yeah. more of like a shooting stick. But yeah. it's, it's but a it's tripod the same, it's the same style concept, shooting stick. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and there were, you know, st- some of the stuff came out of the military, but there are really some great techniques for using a, a rifle sling oh, along yeah. with a tripod that really, I mean, I've done it. It really will steady it up, and it takes seconds to just get it connected up. So there there are ways you can even improve mm-hmm. that stability mm-hmm. with a common accessory like a sling that you're probably going to mm-hmm. have anyway. So, yeah. But, yeah, this thing, uh, it's cool, man. Yeah, carbon fiber legs, twist locks, a very unique but very functional yeah pan, I lo- I, pan I, slash ball yeah, head yep. i love um, the thing I, you know considering the penalty here maybe a little over a pound between this and this to me it's a it's a no-brainer yeah. it, uh, i'll carry this one every day it's not a complex ball head either there's not a dizzying amount of knobs and levers to pull push twist and flip um it's, it's kind of one set your tension mm-hmm. and flip your lever mm-hmm. and you're ready to go the other thing too, we were talking about twist locks when you started, and the, I think the smaller a twist lock is, the more awkward they are yeah, to use, right? Absolutely. Easier to grip. So these are a nice big fat. I mean, yep. I've got big hands, but the, the bigger diameter those twist locks yep. are, kind of the easier and quicker yep. they are to use. So in some ways, they, the twist lock actually works a little better on a bigger tripod leg like this, right. as opposed to the you know the little summit there. They all have their place. You know what I mean? Like it, it's in, you know, it's like collect them all, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a, yeah, there's d- different different jobs for different pieces. So, man, I got a lot of tripods now. I guess I got one more. <laughs> Shoot, <laughs> I was thinking the same. I'm like, ah, oh, no. Um, it's cool. Did we miss anything? I think we covered the uh, the basics. Yeah. We did. Know? We did. You know, we, we didn't get into heads too much. Um, we kind of yeah. use, you, people can see, a pretty standard head with all. It was just a nice, light, trim head. One of the things worth mentioning is, is most of these heads are use a very standardized method of attachment. Right. And there are a lot of different heads out on the market. If someone wants a fancier head, smoother head, I mean, it's not a big deal to, to change out a head on a tripod. Oh, this one is a little bit unique. You probably mm-hmm. wouldn't easily do that. But many, I mean, in the past, I've found myself doing that. I may have a particular aftermarket head that I really like. Yeah. I'll screw that head off and put it on. It's easy to do. So. 
Yeah, I know. I know uh, folks have done the same thing. They're like, oh, I love the leg set, but you know, I have an right. affinity yeah, for this particular yep. head, and they just yep. pop it off, yep. put it on. Um, this head is definitely sufficient. I've used it quite a bit, uh, but uh, it, f- it affords you, you know, the ability to do that, no doubt. So, um, golly, <sighs> the switchback. I mean, okay, I'm a pan. I'm I'm a pansy when it comes to carrying weight, extra weight. I thought you were gonna say you were a pan fan like a pan head. <laughs> oh, I am that. I so I no. am. I am that too. I am that too. But I, I just I really actually don't have. I, that's why we have you here, Paul, because you've hunted the heck out of yeah, this thing. Use it a lot. Um, yeah. I don't have any meaningful time with this one, and uh, it's gonna, gonna have it's to gonna grow on some. you when you do. I'll promise. Cool. All right. Well, there you go. There's some basics on things to consider when choosing a tripod. Yeah. And, uh, a little bit of a sneak peek at yeah, something new. and sneak peek at yeah. something new here. So the uh, switch back. Check them out. Thanks, everybody, for listening. All right. And uh, stay stable. <laughs> That'll work. All right. <laughs> Bye. See ya.